Hello, it's Kieran from PC Games N. I'm joined by our lovely hardware writer, Dave. Hello. So, Dave, you've seen the new NVIDIA cards. You've had a bit of time with them. How, how, how are they going? Yeah, it's quite impressive, yeah. I mean, NVIDIA have launched, well, they're about to launch three new cards. So that's the GTX 2080 Ti, GTX 2080 and GTX 2070. And we've had a play with the GTX 2080 Ti, doing ray tracing for the first time ever. We're getting real-time ray tracing in games and we're getting it this year, which is pretty damn exciting. So that's pretty exciting. Um, obviously, we're going to be seeing a lot more like the Star Wars short that was brought out recently. Yeah, I like the shiny, shiny, it's shiny, Star shiny Star Wars. Wars. So yeah. Shiny. Yeah, but but how does that affect the pricing in the long run? Well, the new ray tracing cards are seriously powerful, seriously impressive bits of kit, but they are seriously expensive too. So the cheapest one starts out 499 for the reference edition 2070. So that's 499 for a third tier graphics card, which is which is tough going, and it goes all the way up to 999 for the reference 2080 Ti. But that's the reference card. NVIDIA are doing Founders Edition thing again, but this time it's slightly different. So they're doing overclocked versions of the Founders Editions. So they're factory overclocked out of the box. So they're not reference cards. They've got shiny new fans with dual axial fans on them. It's all, all very shiny, but those are at least $100 more expensive. So the 2070 Founders Edition is $599 now. 2080 is $799, $800. And the 2080 Ti, $1,200. But we've also heard there's going to be an Asus version, which is going to be $1,500. That's insane. That's, that, that's some expensive, that's some expensive graphics cards right there. So Dave, you've obviously had hands-on and you've been playing some games. What have you been playing and, and how is the performance? Yeah, so we've been playing with the GTX 2080 Ti, so the top-end card in the stack. And we've been playing uh, the ray-traced version of Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Battlefield 5, which is really exciting. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider has, as is aptly named, Ray Trace Shadows. So it's, it, that's all very exciting. Unfortunately, the demo we played only had a single spot of light and most of the demo was in shadow as you can probably see from the footage we're going to show you so uh, that wasn't massively impressive um, it was also running pretty slow at 1080p with a $1200 graphics card which, which which is hard to pass but this is these are pre alpha builds so there's going to be a lot of optimization that's going to go on so they're likely to perform a lot better than that but still we're talking about running at 1080p because we've got some seriously intensive graphical stuff going on more impressive, though, was Battlefield 5. Battlefield 5, they've used reflections, uh, to, ray tracing to do the reflections in absolutely everything. So from absolutely everything from car bonnets to windows in trams um, to the, the water on the floor, even to the watery eyes of your opponents. It's, it's, it's pretty impressive stuff. Even down to actually the wooden stock on your gun will reflect things. It's, it's, it's all, it's all, and it looks stunning. Um, we can't show you actual footage of, of the game itself, of the new Rotterdam map, but we can show you the tech demo which looks exactly how it does in-game, which is, which is some seriously impressive stuff. I mean, again, this is running at 1080p. Uh, we're talking to DICE, and their aim is 1080p 60 um, out of the box. But also, NVIDIA are hinting that maybe we could be getting 1440p at 60 hertz or above, which would be a lot more palatable. But it, it runs pretty nicely, and it looks stunning, absolutely stunning. The difficult year is going to be going back afterwards to things that aren't ray traced, where you can see all the weird artifacts and you can see how the reflections just don't work. So that's, that's where it's going to be a struggle. So only NVIDIA has ray tracing right now, right? Yeah, I mean, the, the new uh, RTX 20 series are the first graphics cards that can do ray tracing. But it's all in conjunction with the DirectX ray tracing API that Microsoft have been putting together um, in conjunction with, with NVIDIA. But it's an API, it's a standard thing in DirectX, and that's what um, DICE have been using with Battlefield 5. So there is the potential for uh, Radeon fans to get excited because you could get ray tracing in your GPUs if AMD ever bothers to make any GPUs that are supporting of DXR, which they haven't yet. Obviously, not perfect yet with ray tracing, but how do the cards perform in regular games? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty close. It's pretty close with ray tracing. There's going to be some optimization going, um, but in normal games, normal rasterized games, the performance is pretty pretty impressive. Um, just from the architectural improvements of the Turing GPU, you're looking at about 1.3 to 1.5 times the performance of a GTX 1080 with an RTX 2080, which is which is pretty impressive. 
but the new Turing cards have got AI hardware put in it from the deep learning professional cards that NVIDIA have been doing over the last few years. So they've been using tensor cores in the new Turing GPUs and they're using that AI deep learning in computer games now. So they're using that to do a different kind of anti-aliasing uh, called DLSS, so deep learning super sampling, which uses machine learning um, on the tensor cores and that will get you another almost 0.5x performance. So you're looking at the RTX 2080 getting two times the performance of a GTX 1080 in, in certain games that support DLSS, using the power of AI and deep learning. This is it's pretty impressive stuff. Well, that is quite, quite impressive. Quite so impressive. it is. Uh, and if you enjoyed the video, please do leave us a like, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for more. Yeah.